When I got the call from Three Arts, I felt like somebody had paid attention to all these years of me working. It was like, you go on the recipient, and I'm like, oh my God! All I wanted to do was scream, but unfortunately it was at my job. So what I wanted to do was just go on my lunch break, go to the John Hancock Center, the observatory, and just scream really loud. I got a little weak. I couldn't really believe what was coming out of my phone. There was an immediate sense of relief. First I was speechless and also moved. I'm, I'm just elated. I'm just so elated right now. I'm just on cloud nine. To win something like this is really, it's a huge honor. It's a huge recognition. Being nominated for this meant a lot to me. Who in the world is that person? Who are you out there? I won't know, but thank you so much. Every artist that's serious about their practice needs some kind of recognition and needs some support, and I'm very thankful. I had to first be silent for a moment as if there was an angel there, just like answering the call. More so than anything, I consider myself a UMTV rap 90s kid. That's like my first culture that I claim, then, you know, being a Mexican-American immigrant and all this other stuff. I started doing graffiti art on my own since 1989, and all the way through high school and college, I was also taking art courses. So there was a lot of inner dialogue between what I was learning as established art and what I was learning on the street. Over the years, um, parents started coming up to me on the street while I was painting and asking me what school did I learn this in. Their children were interested in learning how to do graffiti, but they were trying to find them a safe outlet. And so there was a gap um, that identified itself to me, and that's what really compelled me to go back and become a teaching artist. In grad school at SAIC, I really concentrated on learning how to teach graffiti as an art form. I start out by teaching on paper, inside the classroom, but students really want to get their hands on spray paint. And I can totally understand that. Most times I grab a sketchbook after a class is over and I try out new ideas or I, I make time. So that type of self-interest that I see students um, going up and above beyond expectations in order to spray paint, that's what um, I get from them from teaching. And that's what I get to take back into my studio. I was born and raised right here on the west side of Chicago. No I'm basically a very simple yet complex individual. You think you know. The way I got started in the music, I have to thank my mom because she played music at home. It wasn't something that I had to grow into. It was just there in my heart and in my soul. She tried to discourage me a bit because she grew up during the time of Dinah Washington and Billie Holiday and she saw how hard it was. Set you free. Especially being a female and being an African American artist in this art form that is, was male dominated. But I told my mom, I said, well you gave me a great foundation. My vocal improvisation, uh, I emulate sounds of guitars, violins, saxophones. I'm just always influenced by the musicians that, that I work with. They are truly my greatest inspiration. I just close my eyes and I think about being uninhibited because if I thought about half of the things that I did, I probably wouldn't do most of them. <laughs> When I was a little girl, we would always go to see plays and I just loved them. I would go and it would be a magical event. And the thing that's really great for me is actors are still magical to me. I can't act, I don't understand how they do it, I love them for it. Which makes it magic for me every time. I love the simplicity of light. I love different kinds of light bulbs I have. I actually have a stock of uh, clip lights and light bulbs. Lighting designers in town will call me and say, can we borrow some of your clip lights? Can we look through your stock of light bulbs? I can spend hours at the Home Depot looking at the different kinds of light bulbs. I have a tendency to work very subtly. There's an old phrase people say, um, the best lighting design isn't seen, and that kind of makes every lighting designer squirm. Um, but I think that if you serve, when you do serve the piece so wonderfully, you can have flashing colored lights going every which way, but if you're serving the piece, then people are not necessarily separating you from the piece. 
I just I love turning lights on and off and seeing how it falls on the body or that piece of fur you know furniture on the set or I just I love doing that and I love day to day being in a different theater doing it a different way. Luckily, my mom took me to a dance studio around the corner from her work because she thought I had the energy for it. Contemporary jazz dance, I feel like it's a happy medium between like modern and jazz. Um, like it's organic, but yet it's, some, it's still got that flair and flash behind it that jazz has. My choreography always starts from the inside out. And as an artist that's working with me, they also should be able to have that same experience. It's a give and take, collaborative. So I love being able to do that as a choreographer, bring out that thing that I love to bring out as a dancer and the person I'm working with. It's given me a little bit more confidence. I'm a juvenile diabetic, so I've had to persevere um, early on just in life. And to be able to really go through this life as an artist and having a disease that ha doesn't have a cure yet. I'm optimistic. Um, but to have that, and it hasn't hindered anything. And people don't see that. They're not just seeing that, they're seeing, they're seeing me. They're seeing my art. They're seeing my person. Dance is something that uh, feeds through me every day. I feel it's the best way to relate to people, I really, because it's the art I know. Fundamentally, I make plays with people. It's one side of my work is being an artistic director, so that means taking ensembles and building work with those ensembles over the course of years. I think I'm always looking for projects that are gonna require a really unique ensemble, people with really particular storytelling skills coming together and sharing those skills with each other so that everybody in that world becomes better at what they're doing. At the start of every process I make, all of the actors or writers or whatever, however that process is going to work, create a sort of list of goals that by the end of the process they know how to do something they didn't know how to do well before. I really love being able to create situations like that for artists and for myself of what the new, what goals we have while we're creating the show that also affect our lives outside of the show. You're playing, right? Shouldn't we be sticking to the script? Shouldn't we should be much closer to act two by now? Yeah, well, your whole magic key scene, it had nothing to do with the story of Bluebeard. <laughs> <laughs> I love thinking about what is the ritual of seeing live performance. My goal is always to make sure that it is important that we're telling the story right now. Even if that importance is that we're all silly and laughing, it doesn't always have to sound so heavy. I'm fascinated by the way that narrative is constructed, the things that have that I've often been kind of affected by the most or that have stayed with me the most have been these pretty intense um, experiences or, or sites or places that I've visited. And so in some way, I want to I wanna reflect that in my work. There's this questioning that I always had about being Colombian and being Mexican, but being uh, American and then thinking about like who I am as a person and how that all plays into you know, who I am as an artist, as a father, you know, as a Latin male. They're, they're not always on the surface of my work. Um, they're, they're there in other ways so that I want viewers to feel like it's open-ended, that it's not just about, you know, Harold Mendez from Chicago. Oftentimes the work is pretty quiet, but it re it's heavily invested in materials and it requires a closer observation. I like to work in various ways that, that I can find the, the, the proper medium for the message. I uh, have, at this point in my life, really embraced the ukulele to center all of my efforts to bringing forward the Pacific Island culture, and in particular, um, Native Hawaiian music. So, I set out to figure out a way to develop a program or develop in some way that would address these things. Um, and I, I found that the ukulele would be the easiest. I am so my grandmother's granddaughter. What I'll do is a quick hit on the first 
traditional Hawaiian song that all 2,500 plus students that I've ever taught all has to learn, and it's due to her. And every time I teach it, I see her dancing in that lid. I think what I'm so blessed with is um, her ability to teach me how to instill Hawaiian values in anybody that comes before me. I'm attracted to a lot of subject matter. I'm constantly thinking of everything in the world. Sometimes I feel like I'm an observer from another planet and I'm just documenting everything for history. If uh, our civilization just collapses, I want people from, you know, from our other civilizations to find my work and be like, oh, so this is what humans were doing or this is what humans were attracted to. It can range from news and events to uh, things that I see like luxury, uh, celebrity, royalty, and home interiors. So one month I could be into social injustice, making a whole lot of paintings about that. And then the next month it will be about luxury and Lady Gaga and you know, all of that. Instead of keeping a diary, I just document it. With me, painting is the only medium that I like to use to communicate to the world. Unfortunately, there's not enough hours of the day and I wish I could be awake 24 hours a day because that way I could achieve so much. I could be painting so much. I'm a movement artist and choreographer. My work is deeply personal and it comes from my uh, background of coming from Germany and being of um, Turkish roots and the sense of being in between cultures, languages, countries, and uh, that I think deeply influences my work. I grew up in cities, so I'm, I'm fascinated by them and how they flow and move. It's very interesting to me how each city has their own makeup, their own um, essence, their own uh, flow. I went into Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras. In three weeks we did this great piece. In Tegucigalpa just had a coup d'etat and they, the government is tr um, transitional and there were a lot of demonstrations going on during the creation of the uh, piece. It kind of changed the, the people that were there. The most rewarding uh, thing that people said was that um, I showed them a positive way of looking at their city. So that was very rewarding. What I do is teach the craft of poet writing, which is this expression, or a, a form of expression, um, capturing a moment within this language. I think the, the, the art of the teaching art is, is listening and engagement. And I think that's all we do. We engage people in ways they're not normally engaged. Senorita notice me walking down the wrong street. She say, black boy, black boy, what you doing on my street? I ain't come here to bother nobody. I just came here to see my love. Oh Lord, dear Lord, just let me get to the door, please. I believe a lot of times people in this world are not validated. I learned how valuable I was through my words. And I see a lot of times in the students that I work with, the moment they gain a sense of value in themselves when they read a poem out loud. When I found out about the award, I went outside and I placed my feet on the grass. I fell to my knees and I was just laughing and crying. I felt like the, the earth or like the, the universe or something was holding me in a way that I needed to be 
supported. What Three Arts has allowed me to do is be a really great role model to my daughter. And even talking about it makes me emotional. It was like life-saving for me because it meant I could work this year. Like truth be told, otherwise, I was thinking once I got through my projects, I would have to stop for a little while. The projects that I have in my mind, now I can make them into reality. So this is a sign of, go ahead, do it. No one's stopping you right now. It felt like a lifeline to me at that moment. And, 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 and then I just started to kind of tear up. As soon as I hung, I hung up, I uh, hugged all three of my boys and then called my wife at work. And when I asked you, what do I do with the money? What do I do with this? And, and you said, whatever you want, the things the struggles I've gone through, the, the perseverance of everything was so validated for me. 